This is Michael Popak with a legal AF hot take on Trump on trial. We got a new ruling by Judge Mershon even before the jury sat down to do its work today in opening statements. This off of what is referred to as a Sandoval motion by the prosecution, the Manhattan DA, to bring in if if Donald Trump decides to testify and waive his Fifth Amendment privilege, what uh, uncharged crimes and bad acts from the past that they will be able to use in cross-examination and impeachment of Donald Trump. The judge has made his decision and the uh, prosecutors have gotten most, but not all of what they were looking for as we predicted on legal AF. The, there was no way the, uh, the judge in balancing the probative value against the highly prejudicial impact of some of this evidence on the jury who's trying to make a decision about whether Donald Trump committed 34 acts of uh, 34 felonies uh, in the state of New York. This is the information that uh, that is the prosecutors are going to be allowed to cross examine Donald Trump with if he takes the stand only if he takes the stand. None of what I'm going to tell you right now comes in if Donald Trump elects to keep his Fifth Amendment privilege intact and doesn't testify. I'll tell you what is allowed to be used and what is not going to be allowed to be used that the prosecutors had asked for in their giant Christmas list. I mean, they knew they weren't getting everything. They loaded that list up pretty well. But I'll tell you that the key things and the prosecution should be um, very pleased with the result. The uh, gag order that were violated by Donald Trump in the New York Attorney General case and the findings by the judge that he had not been truthful under oath, that is going to be able to be used against Donald Trump. The rulings and findings of Judge of Judge Angoron in the New York Attorney General $465 million civil fraud judgment um, and decision and order against Donald Trump, that can come in in cross-examination against Donald Trump. Just as a side note, right now, as I'm doing the hot take, there is a hearing going on uh, uh, down the street at 60 Center Street in New York about whether the $175 million bond that Donald Trump posted is appropriate. But all of the findings and rulings by Judge Angoron in the New York civil fraud case are fair game in cross-examination of Donald Trump should he take the stand. As it relates to the E. Jean Carroll case, two cases in which Donald Trump was found both to be a... Uh, a, a rapist or technically a rapist under New York's uh, arcane law and a serial defamer of her, his victim, E. Jean Carroll, and, uh, and awarding two juries, awarding uh, punitive damages. The rape part is not going to be able to be used against Donald Trump. The judge balancing it and finding that while it's probative, it tends to prove a, a fact in the case. It's also highly prejudicial. It'll blow the jury's mind. They won't be able to focus on um, the sex act cover-ups that are at the heart of this prosecution. So, but in the E. Jean Carroll case, the prosecution will be able to cross-examine Donald Trump about the fact that he was found uh, guilty or a judge to have defamed E. Jean Carroll several times and punitive damages were awarded. But the sex part, sorry, the sexual assault part, the rape part will not be able to come in again, not because it's not relevant, but because the judge has weighed the, has done the balancing test required and find that the prejudicial value outweighs the probative value. On the, um, New York Attorney General prior matters against Donald Trump, the fact that his Trump Foundation uh, had to be dissolved because of fraudulent behavior, fraudulent conduct, that will be coming in. So there is a lot here for the New York Attorney General to like in Judge, in Judge Mershon's Sandoval ruling, named after a case here in New York this morning gag orders violated, lying under oath, defaming E. Jean Carroll, being hit by uh, uh, two verdicts against him, including for punitive damages, that his organization has to be, uh, Trump organization had to be dissolved, or the Trump Foundation had to be dissolved, and all of the findings by Judge Angoron in the New York Attorney General $465 million persistent fraud case, they all come in. What doesn't come in? Here's what doesn't come in. They're not going to be able to talk about the sexual assault aspect, the rape aspect of the E. Jean Carroll cases. 
again, under a balancing theory. They're not going to be able to, to bring in the case that was presided over by Judge Mershon, in which the Trump organization, two of its subsidiaries, Trump Company and Trump Payroll, were found to have committed tax fraud and business record fraud, 17 count criminal conviction two years ago. That was where Alan Weisselberg first got into trouble. Um, uh, with the Manhattan DA's office, the chief financial officer for Donald Trump, now serving another sentence at Rikers Island for committing perjury for Donald Trump. This episode of Legal AF is brought to you by Manicora Honey, also known as the Honey with Superpowers. Let me share something sweet with you. And I mean really sweet. It's something that's become a staple in my routine. And I think you're going to love it. I'm talking about Manicora Honey. When I say honey, you might be picturing those bear-shaped bottles at the supermarket. But that's not what this is. Manakura honey is single origin, rich, creamy, and the most delicious honey you've ever had. It's supercharged with unique antioxidants and prebiotics, and has three times more than your average honey. Manakura honey supports immunity, aids digestion, boosts energy, and helps balance inflammation. It's a game changer, and all you need is one to three teaspoons a day. On top of that, Manakura honey has a natural antibacterial compound called MGO, only found in Manuka honey. So if you're looking for something simple and delicious to add to your wellness routine, we found your new healthy habit. Now it's easier than ever to try Manakura honey with the starter kit. Just head to manacora.com slash legalaf to get $25 off. The starter kit comes with an MGO 850 plus Manuka honey, five honey travel sticks, a wooden spoon, plus a guidebook. Now I love the jar and squeeze bottle, but the extra pack of compostable honey sticks is perfect for whenever you're on the go. You can bring them with you when you're traveling or need a quick snack running errands. And they are the perfect energy boost if you're out for a run or at the gym. That's M-A-N-U-K-O-R-A dot com slash Legal AF to get $25 off your starter kit. This is the ultimate honey indulge. And try some honey with superpowers from Manakura. Manakura is incredible. And I'm so thankful they're a partner of the show. I look forward to Manakura every morning. Make sure you click the link in our description or head to manakura.com slash legal AF and try some today. That whole criminal case, although so on the nose, so to speak, so, so close in conduct to what is being charged in, in this prosecution, but that's the very reason the judge won't allow it because it'll it'll blow the jury's mind. They'll assume, well, his company's committed fraud and business record fraud before. You know, they then they did it again. And that's the kind of gatekeeping the judge has to do to keep out this evidence under what we refer to as a Rule 401, Rule 403 balancing test, probative value outweighed substantially by the prejudicial impact on the jury once the jury hears about the 17 count criminal conviction boom they're going to convict again not unusual for a criminal judge to keep out other prior crimes from the jury who is trying to consider whether the guy or the person committed this crime so that's not coming in also uh what's not coming in uh besides that is the uh uh, lastly, the sanctions that were uh, imposed on Donald Trump and Alina Haba by federal judge Middlebrooks down in Florida for having filed a meritless, a bad faith, uh, vexatious litigation against Hillary Clinton, the, the uh, Democratic National Committee, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and everybody else Donald Trump could think of as a political vendetta in bringing a alleged but meritless racketeering case against them, dismissed in Florida, sanctions for bad faith filing. None of that is coming in in front of the jury. The judge finding it too far afield from what was being tried here and uh, that that would not, uh, so he sort of did Trump a solid there. So we've got the lineup now. If, only if Donald Trump takes the stand. I want that to be clear as a takeaway from this hot take. None of this comes in if he doesn't take the stand. And he has a right not to take the stand, and he hasn't made that decision yet. So if he takes the stand, he gets cross-examined, cross-examined vigorously on the fraud 
the fraud findings against him in the New York Attorney General case, the gag order violations and punishments that were imposed on him, the fact that he got, he defamed mercilessly E. Jean Carroll and was sanctioned for that and a judge to have defamed her and hit with punitive damages and the dissolution of the Trump Foundation. What is out is the Middlebrooks $1 million fine and sanction down in Florida for frivolous filings, the fact that his prior companies, his companies got sanctioned in a prior case uh, and hit with a 17 count felony conviction for fraud and uh, tax fraud and business record fraud. Um, and uh, the fact that um, that uh, in, at the heart of the E. Jean Carroll case is a sexual assault rape. That's not gonna be coming in. However, the judge reaffirmed once again that the Access Hollywood hot mic moment where Donald Trump uh, back in 2012 was caught telling Billy Bush that he can sexually assault women and get away with it, including grabbing their genitalia because he's a celebrity. The transcript is going to be read out loud to the jury, although the actual audio is not going to be played. But that was reaffirmed again today. That Access Hollywood transcript is going to come in regardless of whether Donald Trump takes the stand or not. That's an important kind of takeaway from this particular hot take. So look, we're covering the Trump trial. It's every day. Well, it's four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. The court is dark on Wednesdays so while they do other things in other cases. Um, there might be some breaks here and there for holidays and that type of thing. But this is going to go six or eight weeks. I mean, there's going to be a very quick... There has been a very quick uh, opening statements in here. We're getting right to the first witness, David Pecker, formerly the National Enquirer, a roadmap witness from hell for Donald Trump, um, who will uh, be uh, proving a lot of the case, corroborating a lot of the evidence, and bolstering a lot of the credibility of witnesses like Michael Cohen, all in one fell swoop over a day and a half of, uh, or so of testimony. We'll follow it on the Midas Touch Network, and then Legal AF will pull it all together on Wednesdays and Saturdays at, on our podcast at the intersection of law and politics. Join us at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on the Midas Touch Network and find out why we call it Legal AF. We curate the top eight stories. Uh, sorry, that's too many. The top five stories at the intersection of law and politics. We bring it to you right here on Midas Touch and on, the legal, on legal AF. So until my next Legal AF, until my next hot take, this is Michael Popak reporting. By the way, if you like what I'm doing, leave a comment. Um, you know, give a thumbs up. I've been known to we'll do a little bit of a talk back, uh, and uh, I appreciate it. Helps keep the lights on, signals to the algorithmic gods that you like this kind of content. This is Michael Popak reporting.